talks about political participation, but I thought it was a good um, topic to bring up today just because we are um, getting ready to have uh, midterm elections. And so I thought um, it would be a good time to just kind of discuss what is political participation, why is it important, what does it even look like, and um, then we'll do a little bit of um, information about the activity that ties in with this. So first off, we wanted just to talk briefly about what is political participation. So it's really any, it can be a variety of activities. So anything that shapes, um, affects, or it involves politics in general. So um, one of the main things people usually think about in regards to political participation would be voting, um, also attending rallies or marches. It can be anything as severe as an act of terrorism or something like that, that can be obviously extreme. And um, something that uh, a lot of the students do in government class, or um, you might also be doing that in the history class, is writing a letter to a representative. So we really know that it is essential that people uh, participate in our government in order for it to properly work for all of our citizens. So when we're thinking about um, addressing some situations, what are um, some problems or are there any things that you would want to bring up to a politician at your local level, maybe in your state or in your town? Can you guys think of anything that you would want to um, mention to a uh, politician or someone? Well, um, I'm in the South, um, even though I'm, up, I'm from up North, and things are quite different down here, um, especially when it comes to voting. So I guess if I wanted to ask anyone something, it would deal with, uh, to me, they, they're undecided as to whether um, a voter needs to have ID to show before they're voting, or if you know them, you can go on and, and let it pass. Now, I belong, I don't know how I'm in this, because I'm not a political person, but I'm trying to be a political person, and I belong to this organization called Alabama New South Coalition, uh, and I feel really weird there because I don't know anything, but I'm trying to learn. I've been in there for a few years, but they seem to be having a problem with a voting issue. Well, up north from Cle in Cleveland, Ohio, um, because of more people, a bigger mass of people, these things that I'm, I'm um, um, dealing with down here or find out down here, I wouldn't have found out up there because of so many people. But down here, by being so small, you're close-knit with everything. And so to find out that there's a problem with voting issues, whether or not, and this is every year, every time they vote, whether or not a person should have ID, uh, if they should show their ID, or if you know them, um, maybe let them pass and put their, their wow. vote balance on the side. All kinds of crazy stuff that I wouldn't deal with if I was up in Cleveland. So I guess I would ask a, a, you know, someone something like that, what is truly the lowdown on that? Right. Well, and I think that's a great um, point, is that around the country, you're going to have different rules and regulations. Some of those are going to be state laws. Some are probably based on the local area like it sounds that you know you're in a smaller um community down yeah. south and so it's kind of tight-knit maybe everybody kind of knows each other you might have some people that let some things slide more than others um and then i know that some different states are trying to enact voter id laws that require um like a driver's license or a picture id yes. where some states you don't have to have that um so I know that there is some confusion, I think, on a, a larger scale when you have all these different um, rules and regulations based on where you live or what actually you're voting on at the time. So I'll be interested to see how that pans out for you um, this coming November, because November 6th is going to be that next big vote. Are you planning on voting? Um, I vote every year. In fact, like I said, by me being a part of the organization, this particular organization, um, we were working up under um, Senator Hank Sanders. I think he may have retired, but in either case, I'm I'm usually hired to to be at the polls and to pass out ballots. Well, that's an 
excellent uh -huh. example of political participation and and that um, doing things like that. So I appreciate you having that awesome example to talk about this. Um, so as we look at political participation, we also want to talk a little bit about political movements. So what is a political movement um, where something that you um, have a bigger group of people interested in? So it's going to be a social group that operates together um, in order to get some kind of political goal, some type of change, um, whether it be to the laws or to um, the court systems or things like that. That can be based on a local level, regional, national, or even an international level. And um, there are a number of these political movements throughout you know, American history. Um, can you think of any that come to mind, either historical or, or recent, any political movement? Okay, so I had mentioned that I am a member of the Alabama New South Coalition that does some of these things. We get together to see who we're going to um, vote for or represent. And again, mm -hmm. it's still headed by Senator uh, Hank Sanders. So would that be a, a political movement? Well, um, you typically will see movements um, that could be, yes, on a local level, I would say. Yes. Because you are working to get people out to vote and um, I'm sure trying to kind of put specific issues in front of voters so that they have an idea of um, some changes that they can make on a local level. Um, we also can talk about some of those big national movements. Some examples we have would be, you know, um, back pretty early on in American history, one of the biggest movements was the abolitionist movement. Um, and then we saw women's suffrage was another big one, kind of from the history, uh, the labor movement. So a big push towards um, getting um, <clears throat> quality working conditions for people. Um, that's where they really pushed for um, weekend, kind of having some time off and also like having um, sick time and things like that. There was a big push for all of that. Um, the civil rights movement, definitely one that stands out. And as you can see in this picture here, you see all of these people up in Washington. So that was kind of that idea of just a group of people really massed together behind an idea or a, just a a, an ability to change things is really what they're working towards. So there was a big push towards ending the Vietnam War. If you remember the Million Man March, not that terribly long ago. Um, Black Lives Matter is a current one. Um, the Dakota Pipeline, if you guys um, remember that kind of going on out west recently. Um, all of those can be examples of political movements, either kind of on a national scale or even down to a more local level like the Dakota Pipeline. <clears throat> so looking at why does it matter to participate in our government? Um, because a lot of people don't, um, as I'm sure that you see down south, you know, when you're trying to get people registered to vote or um, just to get them some education about um, the um, things that are on the ballot. So um, a lot of times I think people tend to um, have questions or they don't feel like their vote matters and so they just choose not to go or as we've also seen a lot of times depending on um, circumstances some people might not be able to get to the polls on the certain day you know or in time and um, they might not have transportation so there's a lot of factors that can play into why people don't participate or um, can't get out to vote or other things like that um, but I think something to think about when you're deciding whether you want to participate or if you um, think that you don't really matter and you don't even want to bother about it, you want to kind of think about what is the purpose of our government in general? Um, what are your rights? How important are those rights to you? And then how satisfied are you with the current situation with the government and how it is working? So if you look at those questions and you kind of say, eh, you know, I feel like 
some of our government officials aren't really speaking for me or, you know, I need to try and get my voice out there because I'm not real happy with the way things are. Those are some um, important things to think about when you're considering to vote <clears throat> or to participate in government in some kind of fashion. So again, how can I participate? Um, obviously, again, voting is one of the big ones that we typically think about, um, but you can also um, just participate in a political discussion. So talking with your friends and neighbors um, about, you know, kind of important things to you and to um, your community. Um, you can make yourself an educated voter. So trying to get information from newspapers, magazines, you know, different types of reference material. You want to make sure that you're evaluating it for accuracy because we know there's a lot of fluff out there. Um, and you want to, you know, kind of think about the content. How do you feel about some of these issues so that you can make a, um, a choice on how to participate based on your thoughts and feelings about how things um, should be working at the government level. Um, so you can sign a petition, campaign for a candidate. Um, we see uh, thousands of people every year um, serve their country in the military or some other um, government working situation. Uh, and then also with, with, we saw those social movements or those political movements, um, you can demonstrate through marches or sit-ins or other forms of protest also um, in order to get your your um, points across. So um, any other methods of participation that you guys can think of? I thought these were some of the kind of main ones that we typically would think of. Uh, they seem to cover quite a bit. Well, um, I'll jump here then to, um, you know, we've already kind of talked about a few of these questions and we've gotten given some um, good examples of the political, you know, participation. Um, how do you feel about participating? Do you feel like you're making a change? Does it get frustrating or, or what are your thoughts kind of behind your participation currently? Well, I um, appreciate the fact that um, I can participate and the the quality of the people that I'm around to be able to do it and to know that I'm helping other people. Uh, that's very fulfilling for me when I'm at the polls uh, and someone come and ask me, you know, which way to go with it and, and uh, for me to be able to, you know, help them out in that area where they can go in there and feel confident and comfortable. So I appreciate uh, uh, that type of work. I agree. I think that we, we definitely could use more people like you because I don't think there's probably nearly enough people that are participating um, in the fashion that you are, um, where I think, you know, there's a lot of people that kind of think I'll go vote and that's my participation, but not necessarily thinking about working at the polls and helping to educate their neighbors and friends about the issues. Yes. Um, do you find that when you do talk to people, they are more likely to go vote and, you know, kind of get involved or well, do you yeah. get pushback? The group that I, I'm uh, involved with, we do, we have meetings all the time. And so we do provide transportation. So we do oh, go into, okay. we have, we set up in churches, we set up, you know, in different areas and, and we have numbers, telephone numbers out and, and we, you know, the senior citizens, we'll go to senior citizen places and pick them up. So we do all of that. That's awesome. I, and I had heard too, I know that um, Uber and Lyft were offering a free service, I think, um, this coming um, election on November 6th. I saw that they were going to have that option too. I'm not sure if that's on a nationwide scale or... Um, just kind of at some local levels, but I thought that that was a really cool thing too for a company to do, um, mm -hmm. to try and help you know people get out and have that opportunity to participate. 
Yes, that is cool. Do you, um, while we're just kind of chatting for a second, do you think there should be any limitations on participation? Um, okay, I'm not quite understanding. Well, so you know you have to be 18 to vote. Um, that's kind of one of those limitations. Do you think that there should be maybe like an age limit on voting? Should there be um, other kind of rules and regulations around it? Or do you think everybody should have the open opportunity to participate? Well, okay. So there should be an age limit because there's not, I mean, there'll be a lack of understanding and it would be unfair. Uh, also, um, you know, some people, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm just assuming what I'm going to say, since you brought that up, I'm hoping that some people are taking advantage of maybe some mentally ill people and just because they want this vote, that they have someone going there and they're practically, you know, brain, uh, brainwashing them to tell them how to vote when they have a, a, a complete lack of understanding. I think in that area, something should be done about that. If that is happening, I'm not saying that's happening. Uh, well, I'm sure that there is probably some of that happening. Um, around i mean yeah. and i don't know the best answer to that either right yeah because um, how do you how do you kind of monitor that but i think that's kind of one of those sticky situations that you always hear come up around this time of year election time um where people are always not everybody but you know you hear some people talking about voter fraud and like people trying to vote too many times or, you know, people voting that shouldn't be in certain areas and things like that. So I think that's always kind of a, a common theme and question that goes on around this time of year is how do you, you know, try and not have voter fraud or things like that, um, but how much is it really a problem? And there are just all those kind of questions that go around um, about that. So... Yeah. Um, okay, great. Well, any questions um, specifically regarding social studies? I know that this is not really the class that you're in particularly, but um, any, any other particular questions that you have before we show this uh, short video clip? Um, no, 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 I guess not. Not to like, like you said, <laughs> really get there. Um, but uh, so what this is just a preparation for it. Um, for when I get there or uh, this yeah. class that you're having here. Correct. So you will eventually um, be taken government. So everybody has to take that before graduation. So it won't be all for naught. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like always, we're going to, we're recording this. So it will be um, posted on the teacher YouTube page. So any student that is not, able to come to the live session can always access it as well. So what I would like to do is show this um, short video. Um, it's just an introduction to government. So it might cover um, a little bit more just the basics, right, of mm -hmm. government. Um, it's from the Crash Course series. So if you ever um, want to watch some, I'm sure they have tons of history ones as well. Um, so you can always go to, I know this is not real easy to <laughs> see the um, link there, but if you just type in crash course and whatever you want to watch, so like a crash course, um, are you in U.S. history right now? Uh, yes. Okay, so I'm sure that they have U.S. history ones. Um, and this will give you just a, a short example of what some of the crash course videos are like. They're usually pretty short and kind of fun. They just are a general overview, but they do have um, U.S. government and politics. They have like 30 different ones. So um, again, if you want to watch them for history, I'm sure they have a ton of those um, as well. So you can always go in and if there's one thing that you're having trouble with in that class, you could always just kind of uh, put crash course in there and then ask about it and it probably will have like a little five or 10 minute video that kind of covers it. So that's kind of nice to have as an option. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, share my screen and to show this video, it's about five minutes long, maybe six. And then um, we will come back and 
do a little review over the activity that is tied in with this political uh, participation uh, course. Crash okay. no? Course Government and Politics, a new show. Hooray! <laughs> Why are fireworks legal or illegal? We might find out. Will we find out, Stan? Anyway, I have a question for you. Have you ever wondered where your tax dollars go or why people complain about it so much? Or who pays for the highway that runs past your house? Or why you use the textbooks you use in science class? Or why you need a license to drive or to hunt or to fish or to become a barber? I've always wanted to cut my own hair back when I had it. Have you ever wondered why you have to be 21 years old to drink alcohol but only 18 to vote or gamble? Sometimes voting is a gamble. Actually, always. Do you get confused when you hear people on the news talk about Wall Street regulations or Obamacare or the national debt? Do you wonder why there are so few cell phone carriers and cable companies? How about why it's okay for student groups to lead prayers in schools, but not for the principal to do so? Have you ever wondered if there are any limits on when, where, and how the police can search your home, or your car, or your locker, or you, or your friend, or your grandma? or your grandma's friend. And do you know why you can stand outside of a government office with a sign and a bullhorn complaining about military action that you think is unfair and the police can't stop you, but you can be fired from your job for doing the exact same thing? Have you ever been sued or fined? Ever wonder what the difference is between being sued or being fined? Have you ever wondered why our government does the things it does and doesn't do other things? Have you ever wondered what it would be like if we had no government at all? That would be anarchy. Can we play the Sex Pistols, Stan? That's probably illegal. Why is it illegal? And probably most important, have you ever thought about how you can change the things that seem unjust or unfair or that you just don't like? Okay, so that was more than one question, and obviously there isn't a single answer to all of those questions, except that, in a way, there is. The study of government and politics. And that's what we're going to talk about today, and this whole series, Crash Course Government and Politics, aptly titled. <laughs> So let's start by doing what human beings do when confronted with complicated questions they can't answer. We'll answer a simpler one. In this case, what are government and politics? And why do I need to learn about them? Government is a set of rules and institutions people set up so that they can function together as a unified society. Sometimes we call this a state or a nation or a country or Guam. And we use these terms somewhat interchangeably, except for Guam, that might be a little confusing. So. We study government in order to become better citizens. Studying government enables us to participate in an informed way. Anyone can participate, but doing so intelligently, that takes a little effort, and that's why we need to learn about how our government works. Politics is a little different. Politics is a term we use to describe how power is distributed in a government. And in the US, it basically describes the decisions about who holds office and how individuals and groups make those decisions. Following politics is a lot like following sports in that there's a winner and a loser, and people spend a lot of time predicting who will win and analyzing why the winner won and the loser lost. The outcome of an election might affect your life more than the outcome of a sports game, though, unless you're gambling which might be illegal. Government is really important. Everyone born in America is automatically a citizen, and many people choose to become citizens every year so that they can have a say in the government. The USA is a republic, which means that we elect representatives to govern us, and a democracy, which means that citizens are allowed to participate. This ability to participate is something we take for granted, but we shouldn't. History tells us that citizen participation is the exception rather than the rule, but we're not gonna look at history. Who has time? That's what history courses are for with that other guy. So one way people can participate in government is through voting, and many people will tell you that that's pretty much the only way we can participate participate in government or politics, but they're wrong. And I love pointing out when people are wrong. Let's go to the thought bubble. Sure, when you mark a ballot, you are participating in the political process, but there are so many other things you can do to be an active citizen. You can contact your representatives and tell them what you think about a political issue. People used to do this by writing letters or sending telegrams, but now they tend to call or send emails. Although there's nothing like a good old fashioned angry letter. People can work for campaigns or raise money or give money. They can display yard signs or bumper stickers. They can canvass likely voters, try to convince them to vote or even drive them to the polls on election. Day. You participate in politics when you answer a public opinion poll, or when you write a letter to the editor or comment on an online article. You participate in politics when you blog or tumble or make a YouTube video or tweet. I guess even YouTube comments count. First, ever been to a march or a rally or held a sign or worn a t-shirt with a slogan on it or discussed an upcoming election at the dinner table and tried to convince your parents who to vote for? You've participated in the political process. And if you've actually run for office, you've participated, even if you didn't win. And if you did win, congratulations. Now get back to work. You should already know this. But probably the most important thing you can do to participate in government and politics is both the easiest and the most challenging. Become more educated. Anyone can be a citizen, but to be a good citizen requires an understanding of how the government works and how we can participate. It requires knowledge and effort, and we have to do it because otherwise we end up being led rather than being leaders. We learn about politics because knowledge is our best defense against unscrupulous people who will use our ignorance to get us to do the things that they want rather than what we think should be done. Thanks, Thought Bubble. That was my first Thought Bubble narration.
<laughs> Hooray! You guys are fun. This is fun. So that's where we come in. Over the course of this series, we will be looking in depth at American government and politics. We'll be talking about stuff like the structure and function of the branches of government, the division of power between the national government and the state governments, what political parties are, what they do, and how they are different from interest groups. We'll examine the role the media plays in government and politics, how the legal system and the courts work, and how they protect civil rights and civil liberties. We'll look at political ideologies, what it means to say you're a liberal or a conservative or a libertarian or a socialist or an anarchist. Okay, yeah, we probably won't talk about anarchy because that's sort of the rejection of government. Again, sex pistols? Can't. It's a copyright issue. I'll take care of it. Anarchy! Woo! I've been known to do that from time to time. We'll try to understand the forces that are shaping American government and politics today, and we'll work towards becoming more involved and developing our knowledge so that we make our government more responsive and our politics more inclusive. By the end of the series, and actually before the end, you'll understand how our government works and how you can make it work better for you and your community. Not only will you be able to answer most of the questions I started this episode with, but you will become, if you pay attention and think for yourself, a more engaged and active citizen. And you might have a beard if you don't shave. Next week, we'll talk about Congress. Okay, guys, I'm back. Can you see the um, crash course PowerPoint video slide now? I'm sorry, where is it at? It's supposed to be on the side or I, I, I'm not uh, Maybe I was supposed um, to be doing some scrolling. Do you, the, do you see the PowerPoint on your slide? Uh, or is it still on the video? It's still on the video, the crash course. It's still on the, on the front. Is that what you're talking about? Okay, so there, do you see that discussion? Okay, now, okay. Okay, great. I just wanted to make sure that we got back to the PowerPoint. Yeah. So um, again, that was just kind of a quick overview of government and um, they go into quite a lot of detail there. You heard him at the end talk about, um, they'll cover the branches of government, all of the different, um, things related to the court systems and things like that. So there's a lot of really good information in those crash course videos um, and they have them for all kinds of classes. So if you kind of like those, um, I would encourage you to um, look those up because they'll have them for uh, any kind of science class, uh, those, those, those kind of things as well. So if you're taking other classes, maybe check them out. Um, okay, so in relation to the activity that ties in with this political participation um, subject matter. There is a presentation that goes along with this. This is one of the um, assignments kind of towards the end of the government section or a uh, semester. So you're gonna do a um, seven slide, uh, well, six to eight pages. So about seven is right there in the middle. Um, so the first slide that you're going to want to do is um, an introduction. So that would be a great place to uh, just put in something related to political participation, what it is. Um, we can do a little breakdown here. Let's get a little bit closer. So what are um, the kind of things you want to see in an introduction? You might put down a definition of uh, political participation, maybe give a couple examples of what that participation would look like, um, some of the things that we talked about earlier. Um, and then in the second slide, you want to address the question of why people participate in their local or national political issues. So um, if you think about it, um, I read a lot of letters um, in class. We have students uh, write to a local politician. I see a lot of people complaining about roads and construction um, in their neighborhoods. I know I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, and we have a lot of potholes around here. So that's one thing that I always feel a little affinity towards when I read students um, talking about that. But um, obviously there's always um, a ton of political issues out there, whether it be taxes, um, the school systems, 
you know, um, all the way to, you know, the right to bear arms, to um, abortion rights or pro-choice, um, those, just all those kind of things on more of a national level as well. So why do you think that people are participating in those political issues? Then that third slide, um, you want to talk about what is a po uh, political movement um, and what's one that you would like to discuss. We had a list of examples at the beginning of um, this PowerPoint that we talked about. So um, what's one that would really stand out to you particularly and then why was that one that you chose and wanted to talk a little bit about. And then um, the next couple slides you want to tell some examples of how being involved in your community can benefit society at large. So what are some ways that you are um, helping out your community, your neighbors, um, as you um, participate in your um, political process? And then finally, you want to just come up with a conclusion that really summarizes your personal um, thoughts and feelings related to um, political participation. So this is gonna be kind of a, a personal uh, per, um, presentation kind of about how you really feel about um, politics in general. Um, to do this, you are either gonna use a PowerPoint. Um, I know some people do not have PowerPoint on their computers. If you don't have that, um, make sure that you go to um, LibreOffice. Um, if you, you can follow this link that's on this PowerPoint page here, or you can just Google LibreOffice and it'll take you to um, that same link. You can download that for free. It allows you to do PowerPoints within that um, program. So that's a great thing to have um, for this class and for other classes. So if any class is asking you to do presentations and you don't have access to PowerPoint, that's um, definitely um, a good resource to have and to use for that. Um, so looking at the activity, so once you've created your presentation, um, you will have this rubric, which will, um, you know, kind of show you how you can um, get the scores that you're looking for. So you want to, you know, answer the topic in um, sentence form. You want to make it look pretty professional. You want to have some visuals. So um, maybe get some clip art or Google um, images of different political movements and things like that. And you want to have at least six slides. So make sure that um, you follow that and you should be on track for an A. So any questions about that assignment? I know um, you might not be doing this assignment right now, so that might um, not be something that you have specific questions about. No. Okay. So um, if you don't have any questions regarding this assignment, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on or talk about briefly as we're kind of winding down this idea of participation? No. Oh, but I did want to make a comment. Um, sure. Well, it's once about me, you know, I told you I'm in Alabama, but I do six months on and six months off. I'm six months, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. So okay. I'm in mean, I mean, Cleveland for six months, then I come down here for six months, you know. Oh. Are you but, down there during the cold weather or the up here in Ohio? Well, I try to be. I try to be down in Alabama doing the uh, cold weather up in North, up in Ohio. Yeah, I definitely am not. I'm in, like I said, I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio, so I'm down south. But um, it's already starting to get cold. Yeah, I'm, I, I, <laughs> you know, been there and, and on my way back, so. I spend my time, uh, you know, in Cleveland and I do Alabama because my residence is Cleveland. Just that I come down here and, and participate a lot down here in whatever area I can participate in. So, well, that's quite a drive. It is. It is. <laughs> Go all the way from the very bottom to the very top, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, have a safe trip back. Welcome back to Ohio when you get here. Thank you.
Okay. Well, don't forget to um, vote on the 6th. And yeah. uh, thank you so much for your participation. You guys, um, if you have me in class, you can always reach out to me, um, either email or um, by phone, text me. Um, if you have any questions about this particular assignment or um, anything else in relation to um, government semester one or two. So um, hopefully well, I will you. From you. Before you leave, you were saying something about a YouTube teacher. What is that about? So there will, um, after this wraps up, then um, the powers that be will post this up on the YouTube channel for um, students. Let me see if I can find that link for you real quick. So, give me just one second, look back through. I just posted the link in the comments. Oh, perfect, thank you. Yeah, saving you some time. Appreciate that, and um, that's a great reminder for me to have that with me for next time. So I'll definitely put that in um, one of my PowerPoints for the next time around, so. Um, any other questions, concerns, or comments? No, that's it. Okay. Well, again, thank you so much for being here in class and for um, your participation, both in class and in the political sphere. I very much appreciate it and um, hope to see you in class next time. Thank you very much for your time and, and you know, just to allow us to be able to listen to this, learn, and participate. So you continue having a blessed day. Thanks.